What's up YouTube, Alien Rides here. Today we're gonna do an in-depth review on the Ryan RE90. This is the first time that anyone has done an in-depth review on this model. I'm gonna tell you the positives and what might make it not for you. As always, this is an unbiased and unsponsored review. Subscribe and let's ride. We're looking at the RE90 today. In my last video, I actually said that I chose the Thrust, and I do think that overall it's a better scooter. But we have the 90 here today, as we plan on doing some top speed runs and some races soon. A lot of these points will be relevant to other Ryan models though, and we'll do more videos on all of them in the future. So what is Ryan? If you've seen my channel before, you've likely seen Ryan's featured a few times. They make scooters, but not just any electric scooter, electric hyper scooters. Built to be ridden fast with amazing handling. While the top speed is impressive, I actually want to emphasize the handling and the riding experience first, because it's unlike anything I've ever ridden. So what's so good about it? One key component is steering stiffness. Normally I say a steering damper is the first modification I'd recommend for a scooter, but Orion doesn't need that, because the steering mechanism is so rigid. You can feel the friction as you turn, and you can adjust the bolt to make it even stiffer if you'd like. This stiffness is key to safe riding, as it will eliminate speed wobble and help you stay stable after hitting a bump in the road or a pothole. As you return the handlebars to dead center, there's a true straight notch you can feel the stem settle into. If you want to go fast, you'll want to notch to true center, which will help you maintain that position when going very fast. It's a useful feature that I've never seen on another scooter. Now I get a lot of questions around the feel of the ride with only a rear suspension, and honestly, it's totally fine. Millions of people have ridden smaller rental scooters with no suspension and get along fine. Many scooters with front suspension handle like garbage at speed and will get crazy wheel reverberation at higher speeds. This is a racing scooter. It's built to be connected to the ground and handle amazingly at speed. You can definitely handle some bumps in the road and even do some light off-roading on it if needed. Trampoline like suspensions are great for off-roading. Little to none suspension is perfect for racing. Additionally, the frame flexes while accelerating to absorb wobble and vibrations. This is surprising to many, and kind of acts like an invisible layer of suspension. The Ryan Curve Thumbwheel Throttle is the only one of its kind on the market today. Built from military-grade components, with a beautiful cnc aluminum casing, it's one of the best throttles I've ever used. When we say military-grade, this means excessive testing to comply with military drone remote certification requirements. They test to ensure this throttle can work more than 4 million times and still be operational. The Boosted Rev Throttle was also a quality throttle, but it's no longer being manufactured. The Ryan Curve Thumbwheel is built to be ergonomic and consider how your hand rests on the handlebars. It's a very safe throttle to use as it avoids what's called whiskey throttle when you hit a bump, grip harder, and accidentally accelerate with a finger or twist throttle. On this one, your thumb may simply slip off and it'll coast to a stop. When using the Ryan Curve Thumbwheel, your thumb lays over the wheel at an angle. To accelerate, you push down and to the left with your thumb. You have very controlled acceleration and can easily add additional power or reduce power when needed. It also works great with my thick motorcycle gloves. Other features on the carbon fiber handlebars include nice grips with aluminum end caps, a voltage meter, the brakes, and that's it. Not a ton of amenities or flashy LEDs to distract you from the road. Cooling is always important with high power electronics. With Ryan pushing more watts than anyone, it needs an exceptional cooling system. It accomplishes this by having tons of air cooling. When you're cruising at 80 miles per hour, you have a ton of air moving through the system, cooling the controllers and the batteries. We've got air-cooled batteries via ducts in the body and vents for hub motors to keep them cool. The undercarriage sports an air scoop to cool the controllers. Four high-speed fans running at 30,000 RPMs help move even more air through the body. These fans certainly aren't quiet, but I do think they sound pretty cool. Take a listen to the RE90 as I start it up. The thrust, on the other hand, is completely silent. What goes fast must stop fast and the Ryan does that thanks to its Magura brakes. These brakes are four piston hydraulic brakes and some of the best that you can get. You can brake with a single finger and have enough braking power to lock up the brakes and slide to a stop. Maybe not the most effective way to stop, but it sure is fun. We've got Italian made tubeless PMT tires. These racing slicks are super sticky. You can get really low in the corners with them and they provide a ton of traction. I run them at about 25 PSI, which gives me a good amount of safety from damaging the rim and tons of traction. 
the PMT tires are one of the few tires out there that's made out of rubber and not cheap nylon. This ensures a much longer lifespan and fewer flat tires. As I said before, the Ryan folding mechanism is the best ever. It locks the stem into what feels like a single piece scooter because there's zero play in the handlebars. This makes a big difference with handling at speed. And when you do fold it, it folds into a manageable size package, but it doesn't have a locking latch for the stem or anything. You've got a strong carbon fiber pull for the stem and wires run along it down to the folding mechanism and deck. A strong and yet flexible carbon fiber frame is one of a kind. No other scooter looks as good as the Ryan, most having a rather boring and heavy metal box. The curved and aggressive Ryan frame stands out, cuts through the air, and intakes enough air to cool the internals. The carbon fiber parts are made with a prepeg carbon fiber, the same material that's used in F1 cars. Epoxy is impregnated into the fiber and placed in a mold made of 32 pieces. This mold will go into an airless autoclave oven that will remove all air and cure for about 6 hours. Each Ryan carbon fiber body takes about a day to make, and that's not including post-production processes. This is a very intricate, expensive, and difficult process to get right. Ryan utilizes this advanced composite engineering to design and prototype racing bike frames for various manufacturers and their facility. The carbon fiber frames is on beautiful powder-coated arms. You can get a variety of colors and work with Ryan to customize the look of your unit after you order. The deck is also a different shape and encourages you to get into a racing stance, applying weight to the front, which helps you gain traction. One foot is typically near the rear of the scooter, next to the rear fin, and one foot next to the neck. You don't want to step on the rear fin as there's no structural components under it. The charge port sits in the back left of the scooter and is built with one of the best connectors I've ever used. A very satisfying click follows insertion and a twist. There's no worries about shorting this connector by direct contact or damaging it like you can do on other scooters. It's much safer for everyday use or if you have kids around. The power switch is on the rear right. Simply turn on the scooter and you're ready to rock. We've got a huge battery built from high quality cells. The Ryan is using 21700 cells from Molacell, specifically the P42A. Each cell has 45 amps of discharge, making this the cell of choice for performance applications. With 96.6 volts and 30 amp hours, the Ryan has plenty of range to race with the other big dogs, and more range than a Dualtron Thunder or Storm at the same speed. Higher speeds do eat battery though, so if you actually find a place to go that fast, you may be able to kill the battery in as little as 30 miles. More conservative riding will probably get you 40 to 50 miles. We do have a full range test planned for the near future, so definitely stay tuned for that. I do think that the battery size for this Ryan RE90 is perfect though. The Cycle Satiator Smart Charger is the best charger in the world and ships with the Ryan. It's fully sealed and waterproof, which doesn't really matter with Ryan because you're not going to be riding in rain anyway. It's small, quiet, and can charge pretty much anything with a wide variety of charging profiles. You can charge up to 103 volts and 5 amps with this charger. You can also get a 20 amp charger for the RE90, which is massive and basically takes a dedicated circuit. This will charge your Ryan in about an hour or so. Ryan hyperscooters have always used best-in-class technology for its powerful controllers. Dual controllers shoot out up to 400 amps each per motor phase. This gives the Ryan its awesome acceleration and makes it the fastest electric scooter out there. The Ryan weighs around 70 pounds or 30 kilograms. It's not light, but it's amazing weight for the power. I think it might be the best power to weight ratio of any electric vehicle in existence. It's light enough to lift into a car or up some stairs if needed. The dual motors of the Ryan are capable of simultaneously ripping up from under you if you gun it, easily burning rubber at 40 miles per hour. When riding, you'll definitely want to place one foot near the neck of the stem to ensure you're getting maximum traction on the front tire. I don't know a single person who's been able to max one of these out yet, but I'm sure we'll get lots of folks in the comments claiming they're able to. I'll do my best in a controlled environment in the future to achieve stop speed. Maybe a salt flats run? Likely you're going to see the RE90 top out at about 80 miles per hour or so, as that's what it's limited to. Now, let's check out our top speed run. A question I often get asked is whether or not I would commute on the scooter. Whenever someone asks me this question, the first thing that I think of is whether or not I would want to commute on a Lamborghini or McLaren. The answer is hell yes, get to work or wherever you're going fast and in style. One of the reasons I like the Ryan brand is that it's constantly evolving and becoming better. Additionally, 
Leveraging the concept of a platform, you can always upgrade between the various features and models. As the RE90 will keep getting better, you can keep upgrading to the latest version. Ryan is constantly pushing the technology forward. Concepts like the underbody carriage, the unique shaped battery, the curved thumb wheel throttle are all first of its kind. Soon we're going to see even more improvements to performance, and in our last video, we announced that Ryan was exploring water cooling for future models. The Ryan is definitely not a cheap vehicle, and actually one of the most expensive PEVs you can get. At this price level, you're going head to head with the Dualtron X2 and some other high-end e-bikes. To be honest, the Ryan is the only thing I want to ride right now. No other vehicle comes close to being as fun to ride as the Ryan. It's got the best power to weight ratio of any PEV, and also the best thrill to weight ratio. If you do decide to get one, I'd appreciate if you use the link in the video description. That's going to help this channel out a bit and allow us to keep making these review videos. So here's some reasons the Ryan might not be for you. It's not cheap. At the time of this video, the most expensive models are just under 7,000 US dollars before taxes and shipping. This is the most expensive scooter out there. Not everyone will be able to afford it, and that's okay. It's fun to think about and dream about owning someday. For a lower price point, there is the RE60S, which is going to be the same price as something like the Dualtron Storm, but much faster and better looking in my opinion. If you are able to afford it, you'll realize it's not waterproofed. Due to the requirements of air cooling, I don't think Ryan will be waterproof anytime soon. For me personally, that's totally fine as I don't enjoy or often attempt to ride in the rain. Even if I could only ride on the Ryan one day per year, I would still want one in my garage. It doesn't have very many amenities included. It's raw performance, both for racing and the thrill of the ride. There's no built-in lights, though a collaboration with Lupine is coming soon, no turn signals, horns, kickstands, or other things that distract you from the thrill of riding the Ryan at high speeds. There's also long wait times. While their website shows about a four month waiting period, it can often be much longer. Recently, most delays have been to a lot of R&D going into these panels, and it's been taking much longer than the four months advertised. They definitely want to ramp up production and get these out much sooner. I'd say, if you want a Ryan, the wait is absolutely worth it, buy it, forget about it, and one day you'll remember when it suddenly shows up on your doorstep. Even with those few detractors, I still love and recommend the Ryan. It accelerates the best, it looks the best, it rides the best. It's the best personal electric vehicle in existence. I've never had as much fun on any other PEV compared to the Ryan, and I hope you can try one someday. That's all we got for this episode on the Ryan RE90. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. We've got a lot more videos of the Ryan coming soon. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.